Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. It's the Ultimate Forex Swing Trading Masterclass, and my name is Justin Bennett. I'm really, really excited to cover this topic with you because a lot of people don't really understand swing trading and what it involves. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions out there, so this training today is going to take you from feeling frustrated or even confused and really help to clarify things and show you how swing trading can help you in your daily journey with Forex. Okay, so today's training is for you if you wanna learn how to profit from swing trading, um, you're tired of struggling with indicator-based systems. Um, I'm, I'm sure how many of you spend most of your time searching Google looking for that best trading strategy, right? You're constantly looking for something that works. And I'm here to tell you that you found it, but it's not based on indicators, okay? I do use a couple of them, which we'll get to later, but as far as indicator-based systems go, I found that they lag and most, I mean, I would say 99.5 or 6% of them just don't work, okay? So if you're tired of struggling with indicator-based systems, today's training is for you. And it's also for you if you need help drawing key levels and also identifying trends, okay? I'm gonna run you through exactly how I identify key levels in the market and also how I identify trends both short-term, mid-term, and long-term trends. And last but not least, if you're unsure about your entries and targets, one of the most common questions I receive is, you know, I'm able to get into the market, but I can't get out for a profit. So I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I do that. Now, today's training is not for you if you're looking to get rich quick or you expect results without effort. I think it goes without saying that Forex trading is incredibly tough. In fact, succeeding in this business is probably the toughest thing that you will ever do in your life. Okay, it takes months, if not years, to make it in this business, so you've gotta put in the time and effort. So what are we covering today? Well, first, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I draw support and resistance levels. I'm also gonna talk about two highly effective ways to evaluate momentum. So this goes back to identifying trends, and I'm gonna show you the three different trends I look for and also how to evaluate the momentum of each one so you'll know if you should be buying or selling. Third, I'm gonna talk about two effective buy and sell signals that I use. And fourth, I'm gonna talk about, again, going back to that entry and exit, I'm gonna show you exactly how I enter the market and how I exit. And once you understand this, you can use it in any scenario. So you'll never find yourself guessing where you should get in and where you should get out Okay, the very first step when you're swing trading is to identify support and resistance levels. I like to use horizontal levels as well as trend lines to identify key areas to keep an eye on. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump straight into a chart. We have the Euro USD daily time frame, and before I begin, you will notice that I have two moving averages right here. So this is the 10 and 20 exponential moving averages. And I'll show you how I use those a bit later in this webinar. Um, so for now, we're just gonna focus on identifying those key levels. All right, so I like to zoom out on the daily time frame here. And what I'm looking for are the swing highs and lows in the market. So I'm referring to these right here. So we have a swing high here, we have a low here, another swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, so you get the idea. So I'm looking for these points like this, and I'm gonna use these to um, identify those key support and resistance levels. Okay, so if I use those and I come in here, you'll notice I have one level drawn down here uh, because this was a major swing low, so I'm gonna go ahead and identify that right away. I'm then going to start drawing my levels out Okay, so if you come in here, you'll notice that we have a low here, high, another high, and a swing low back here. And just moving on, I'm going to draw one here. So again, you'll notice, and I'll just draw this out for you so it's clear, we've got lows back here, we've got a high right here, and some lows here. Okay, so moving on, I'll then go ahead and look at this low right up here. 
And if I move along to the current price action, you can see that it's not ideal, it's not perfect. Okay, but the market is respecting this area right here. And there's also, if I zoom in, you'll notice that there is another horizontal area right in here. So we've got these highs back here and we've got these lows right here. All right, so that's kind of how I go through and identify the horizontal levels. I like to keep it really, really simple. And one thing that you'll start to notice is that most of the key levels are going to be evenly spaced. Now they're not gonna be perfect, all right? But if you'll notice, there's about 250 pips between these two levels. There's about 180 or 190 pips between these two levels. There's 250 pips between these two levels. So you'll notice that each level is about 180 to 250 pips away from the last one. So what you can do is use that to your advantage. So if we know that each level is about, we'll say 200 to 250 pips away, then we know that from this level, the next one is probably going to be, okay, somewhere up in here. Now it gets kind of choppy back here, but you'll notice that we've got lows here, lows here, and a bunch of lows back here. And guess what? This is about 160, about 170 pips away from the last one. So it's right there in that 180 to 250 range. All right, so that's horizontal levels. Now let's take a look at a trend line. Now the first thing I do when I'm identifying trend lines is I zoom out a little bit just to kind of get a feel for the, the flow of the market. And you'll notice that right away, I'm gonna use this low back here and I'm gonna check out these swing lows right through here. Okay, so we've got this low back here, we've got these lows and this low right here. Now you'll notice that I'm using the very low of each candle. Okay, so the lows right here, and I'm also using the lows right here. And this session, these two sessions actually, closed above the level. So this was still holding us support right, th right through here. But then on this candle, we got to close below support. So I'll go in in another step, I'll go in more detail on how to identify these changes in momentum. Um, but as far as drawing the trend line itself, I look for the very low of the candle. Now, of course, if this were a descending trend line, like this back here, all right, I'd be looking for the very high of these candles, okay? The very upper um, extreme of the wick. All right, so that's how I draw trend lines. So just remember to look for the low and high of the candle all right you don't want to start cutting off too many candlesticks and also keep your levels to a minimum so i see a lot of times traders will start drawing levels that start to look like this and the problem there is that even though some of those levels may be valid you're not going to be able to put on a trade so you're going to be so focused on these little 50 or 60 pip movements that you're not gonna be able to achieve a favorable risk to reward ratio. All right, so let's finish up with our slides here and just run through some key takeaways. So I wanna use the daily and weekly timeframes when I'm drawing these levels. I would say that most of the levels, about 90% of the levels I come up with on the daily timeframe and the rest come from the weekly. You also wanna focus on those swing highs and lows. So if you're on the daily chart, most of those swing highs and lows will come after a few weeks of developing. So you wanna look for those ex the extreme highs and lows in the market, and that's what you're gonna use as your baseline for your horizontal levels. And you also wanna include as many touches without cutting off the wicks, all right? If you start cutting off a lot of candlesticks, you're probably doing something wrong. So at least the first two points of a trend line you want to be at the very extreme of the wick, either the, the low of the candle or the high of the candle. And don't forget about trend lines. I see a lot of traders only using horizontal levels, and while you can do that, 
I found that trend lines are a great tool for identifying changes in momentum. And also let the price action validate the levels for you. Don't be afraid to move levels around if the market invalidates it. So let the market tell you if your analysis is correct or not. And try to maintain spacing between the key levels like I talked about before where each level was approximately 180 to 250 pips away. And last but not least, don't go overboard. Keep your levels to a minimum. So if you're finding that most of your horizontal levels are only 50 pips apart, you're probably overdoing it. So you wanna keep those levels to a minimum. All right, now that you have your key levels drawn, let's take a look at momentum in the market. So the very first thing that I wanna discuss are the three types of trends. The first is a long-term or secular trend, and that's one that lasts for five years or longer. The second is an intermediate or primary trend, and that's one that lasts for one year or longer. And last but not least, we have a short-term or secondary trend, and this is one that lasts for a few weeks to a few months. Now, this is probably the most popular trend because as swing traders, we're doing most of our trading within a few weeks, all right, at most. So we're not really going to um, deal too much with intermediate or long-term trends. However, they can be extremely helpful. And another thing I wanna point out is that you hear a lot of traders saying that a market is bullish or bearish. And the truth is that those terms by themselves are meaningless because without specifying whether you're talking about the short-term, intermediate, or long-term trend, there really isn't much to go on. So if I tell you the Euro USD is bullish, that doesn't tell you anything because it might be bearish in the short term and I'm referring to the long term. All right, so always keep that in mind. Now the very basics of momentum deal with swing highs and swing lows. So an uptrend is higher highs and higher lows, whereas a downtrend is lower highs and lower lows. So that's really basic stuff, but you'll find that everything gets back to the basics. So no matter how complex you try to make something, whenever you're swing trading, it all comes back to the highs and lows. So here's a great example. In this market, you can see that it was previously making these higher lows and higher highs. Okay, but then there was a shift. We had this first lower high right here followed by the first lower low. Okay, so this was the previous low, this one is lower, and now look, all of a sudden, this market starts to head lower. So back here, it was rallying, it moved sideways for a bit, and then just doing nothing but looking at the highs and lows, we can see that there was a shift in momentum right here. One trick that I like to use, and this is, I mentioned this before, but the reason I like to use trend lines is not only can I identify entry points, but I can also use them to identify changes in momentum. So one thing I like to look for is the distance between touches of a trend line. So in this case, we have this uptrend. All right, so it's an ascending level. And although this is just an illustration, I'm gonna show you in a moment a real life example and in this case, it took 35 days between the first two touches. Now, by the third touch, it only took 25 days. Okay, so 25 days from here to here. The next one was just 10 days. So 10 days from this touch to this touch. Now look, five days here. So what is this telling us? And you can also notice that this happens quite often where the market starts to lose momentum, okay? It's an exhaustion signal, right? Buyers are having trouble breaking above these levels. So whenever you see this and you have this ascending trend line, there is a very good chance that the market is about to break lower. All right, so again, this is what you get. So the market is having trouble breaking above these highs. It's retesting this trend line more frequently. And then what happens, you get a break and a retest. So here's a, an example where you can see the concept that I just described. So 
from this touch right here to this one was 178 days. However, from here to here, it was only 48 days. From this one to this one, 22 days. And then this very last one, right, where it actually broke down was eight days. And again, you'll notice that even though the market was still sort of making higher highs here, if you'll notice this swing high back here, look how much higher this one is compared to these. Okay, so the market started to have trouble breaking above this area and it was also testing this trend line more frequently. And what we got here was a market that ended up declining for more than 1000 pips. Now, similar to this concept is something that I call clustering price action. So you'll notice that back here we, had a tr we have an ascending trend line and in a similar way, the market starts to retest this level more frequently. However, just before the breakdown, you get this almost sideways price action that suggests that a breakdown is imminent. All right, so let's take a look at an example here. You'll notice that we had an ascending channel, okay? And notice how quickly the market bounced the first three times. Okay, so once we had this low right here, we could draw this lower boundary, but notice how quickly the market shot up every time it hit this level. But then look what happened back here. Okay, you get this sideways price action where buyers are really struggling to move higher from this level and then you get a break lower. All right, so this is a really great way to identify um, imminent breakdowns and allow you in this case to get short. Now, this section would not be complete without taking a look at a real live example. All right, so here we have the British pound versus the Japanese yen. And you'll notice that we have this uptrend here. And if you remember, this is actually an intermediate uptrend because it lasts for just over one year. So we also have a channel. All right, so let me just draw this out really quick. We have a channel here, and this is actually a pattern that I have posted uh, several times on the website. And I wanna point out something here because this goes back to the concept we just discussed. And what I'm gonna do is just draw the levels or the points where the market interacts with support and resistance. All right, now notice what happens back here. Look at the distance between these first two and then this one right here. And then what happened when the market came back here and tested this level, this is almost a, a guarantee that the market's about to break lower um, because buyers are having trouble moving off of this level. And you also had these lower highs back here. Okay, so those two things combined told me that this market was about to break down. And again, I actually discussed this, uh, this breakdown on the, mark, on, the, on the website. And I also pointed out this retest right here. So we had the initial break here where we could have gotten short. We had the retest here where we could have gotten short. And I also just pointed out this bearish pin bar, which we will talk about later in this webinar. Um, so we had this, this bearish pin bar right here that was good for about 350 pips, okay? But the thing I want to uh, to point out here is that now we're kind of bringing it all together because we're dealing with an intermediate uptrend. We also have a short-term downtrend, okay? So each one of these could be considered a short-term downtrend, all right? Short-term uptrend back here. And so we have this short-term downtrend among a, an intermediate uptrend and you can use a channel like this or a trend line to identify where the market breaks down and look for short opportunities. Now you will notice that the market has started to move sideways and consolidate. However, this looks to me more like an ascending channel and given the breakdown that occurred recently, I would not be surprised to see this market head lower over the next few months. At this point, you should have identified your key levels and you've also evaluated the momentum in the market. 
So now we want to start looking for buy or sell signals. And it's really important here that you scan for signals and not search for them. That may sound like the same thing, but the difference is if you search for, for signals, chances are you're going to find something, right? You're gonna find what you're looking for, but that does not mean that it's worth taking. Whereas if you're scanning for signals, it's more of a casual um, scanning of the market where you're not necessarily looking to do something, but you are scanning for the very best signals. All right, so obviously when we're trading the market, we want to buy from support and sell from resistance. One of the key uh, signals I look for is the pin bar. Now, this is a pattern that I started with uh, at this point about seven years ago, and it's something that I still use today. So it's really, really effective. And the key characteristic of the pin bar is this tail right here. So notice how long this part of the wick is. And another characteristic is the nose right here. Notice how the market closed very near the high of this candlestick. All right, and the same goes for the bearish, the bearish pin bar where we have a long upper wick up here and a very small nose here at the bottom. Now, one thing that does trip up traders a little bit is the color of this body, okay? So notice how this is white, so that means that the market actually opened here, right? It moved lower and then closed right here. This body can actually be a bearish close for a bullish pin bar, as long as the lower wick is still long. And the rule that I have for these pin bars is that this, let me go ahead and clear that off really quick. This tail right here, all right, this, this should be two thirds of the entire range. So the range is from here to here, and this tail should be at least two thirds of that range. And as you can see, this is clearly at least two thirds of the range. So that is really the one rule I have, as well as a small nose. And as long as you have those two things, the body right here should be relatively small. The next signal I want to discuss is the long tailed candle. You'll notice right off the bat that it is very similar to the pin bar in the sense that we have this long tail. The key difference here is that the nose is a little bit longer. All right, so this area up here and the body is also a little bit longer. So this doesn't necessarily qualify as a pin bar because remember the tail in the case of a pin bar this area right here would need to be at least two thirds of this range from here to here. And that's not necessarily the case. This is closer to the kind of 50% area of this range. However, the implications of this pattern can still be effective, right? It, it's, it's similar to the pin bar in the sense that for this bullish candle, if you had a, a key support level right here, this longer tail is, set, is telling you the same thing. And that is that there is demand down here in this area. So it may not qualify as a pin bar. It may not be a perfect pin bar signal, but it is still considered a long tailed candle and it can still produce a move higher just as a bearish long tail candle can trigger a move lower. And as a bonus, I want to discuss the bullish engulfing candle as well as the bearish engulfing candle. And the reason being that this pattern has become uh, one of my really go-to signals, just like the pin bar. So before I used to trade the pin bar, I'd say probably 70 or 80% of the time. Whereas now I might trade the pin bar half the time and the other half the time I'm trading the engulfing candle. So as you can see, as the name implies, the engulfing candle is where the um, range of this candle here or the body engulfs this previous one. Now, here's the thing. There is a lot of debate and there has been for many years whether it is necessary that the body, okay, so from open to close, engulfs the previous range, so from high to low. 
In order to do that, the market needs to actually gap down. So notice that this is the close of the previous candle and this is the open of this candle here. So it needs to actually gap down and then close much higher. However, what I have found is that as long as the range of this candlestick here engulfs the range of this candlestick, I consider it an engulfing pattern. And to be honest, it's just as effective as if the body of the candle engulfed the previous range. All right, so as long as you have a large body like this, this area right in here, and the range engulfs the previous one, it's considered an engulfing pattern. Now, just like the pin bar and the long tail candle, you want to find a bullish pattern at a swing low. All right, so where the market, let's say this is support, the market comes down here into support and then forms a bullish engulfing candlestick and then takes off higher. And with the bearish pattern, here's our resistance level. The market comes up, forms a bearish engulfing candle, and then moves lower. To wrap up, let's take a look at an example of the pin bar as well as the engulfing pattern. So here we have the British pound versus the Japanese yen. And we have this ascending channel that formed on the daily time frame. If I scroll over here and zoom in, you'll notice that we actually got a bearish pin bar right here off of this level. Okay, so back here, the level was still acting as support. It then closed below, below the level, which means that the area now becomes resistant. So notice how it sold off from this area, moved lower, and then came up and retested it. Now, this candlestick right here is our bearish pin bar. All right, so notice this guy right here. That is our signal. And I'll discuss entry and exit methods here in the next step. But what I wanna focus on is the look of this candlestick, because remember, for the pin bar, the tail needs to be at least two thirds of the range. So this area right here needs to be two thirds of this area, which is clearly the case. And the nose in this case was non-existent, which is actually good because it shows that if the, if the nose was like this, I wouldn't want to trade this pattern. All right. It may still qualify as a long tail candle, but if the nose gets too long like this, then it almost becomes closer to something like a doji instead of a pin bar. But as it is, you'll notice that we had this small body and a long upper tail, which qualifies. And we also have this key level right here. Additionally, we also had momentum in our favor because even though the market started to move sideways down here, we had this downtrend that actually started several weeks earlier. Remember, we have this high up here, this low, a lower high, and a lower low. So this actually was a short-term downtrend. So when this pin bar formed at this resistance level, this was a valid sell signal. Next up, we have the Euro versus the Japanese Yen. And here I wanna talk about a bullish engulfing candle that formed. And you'll notice that we had this key level right here. So it acted as resistance back here. The market then broke through it on this candle here and you'll notice that it then began acting as support. All right, there were several instances back here. And if I zoom in at the very end of this period of consolidation right here, you'll note that we have a bullish engulfing. All right, so here's the low. This is the high right here. And the previous candle, the range, this is the high and this is the low. So as you can see, the range of this candle did engulf the previous one. And it's also at the very end of this consolidation and we have our key support level. The momentum is also up because we have the market. Okay, again, we've got this low back here. It puts in a high and then these lows down here at support 
Now, of course, you wouldn't have seen this at the time, but eventually it did put in a higher high. But this bullish engulfing candle right here could have been our signal that the market was ready to move higher. Now, you'll notice that back here, we also had this long tailed candle and you could have actually bought this signal. And even though the market did come back here and retest this level, the fact is that look at this low right here and this low right here. Now you may have been stopped out right here and you also may have gotten out prior to all this because it did take so long to get here. But even if you got out, the market did move higher before it moved lower. So you'd ha you would have had time to trail your stop loss and um, cover any potential losses there. All right, but this is the signal right here. That's our bullish engulfing candle. So we've got low, high, low, and then a higher high. Now it's time for the fun part. So at this point, you've drawn your key levels, you've evaluated the momentum, and you've also scanned for a buy or sell signal, and you found one. So at this point, you want to now identify your entries. Now I use two basic methods, and one is a break of the trigger candle to the upside or downside. The other is a 50% retracement. We'll take a look at both of those in a moment, but first I wanna also mention the exits. So when it comes to exits, you're either gonna exit for a profit or for a loss. In the first case, if we're exiting for a profit, we're really just using those same key levels that we drew in step one, and if it's for a loss, it's gonna be an invalidation of that trigger candle, so either the pin bar or the engulfing candle. Okay, let's flip over to a chart and we're gonna take a look at the same British pound versus the Japanese yen bearish pin bar. And let's first talk about entries. So the first entry method here is gonna be a break below this candlestick. Remember, this is our bearish pin bar right here. So it would be a break below this candlestick. Now the second option is the 50% retracement. So what that says is that we look for a 50% retracement of this pin bar right here. And you'll notice that the very next candle gave us our entry. Okay, so notice how the candle came up above this area. So this would have been our entry right in here. The advantage of the 50% entry is that when you position size this, you're going to be able to make about two times the amount of profit on this move lower than if you had entered here on this break. All right, so the 50% retracement is going to give you a better risk to reward ratio. Um, however, there is a downside to it and I'll discuss that in a moment. But first, let's talk about exits. All right, so in the case of the pin bar, the stop loss is always gonna go above this pin bar here. Now, if this had been a bullish pin bar, okay, like this, the stop loss would go below the tail. So if the market had come up here and taken this out, it would invalidate this pin bar right here. And as far as an exit for profit, what I would have done in this case, and this market you can tell is actually still in process, so it's still playing out. But you can see that we've got a little trend line here that chances are when the market gets down in this area, it's gonna it's gonna catch a bid, okay? I don't know if it's gonna you know bounce higher or bounce a little bit and then break, but as an initial target, this area right down here looks pretty good. So again, it's just another key level. So it can be a horizontal level because there's also an area through here that you could have used so notice we have this low here. We've got some more lows right here and then a bunch of highs. So you could have technically used this right here as your target. So you'd enter up here or enter here, stop loss up here, and this right here is your target area. Okay, let's flip over to that bullish engulfing pattern that we looked at earlier and identify some entries and exits. So in this case, let's talk about the entries first. 
And remember this candle right here was our signal candle. Just like the pin bar, you can enter on a break above this candle. And another thing that you can do, it's not quite as popular, but you can enter on a 50% retracement of this bullish engulfing candle. But remember how I said that the 50% entry does have a big downside, and that is that you may not always get triggered. So notice in this case, the market started to move higher, but never actually retraced this 50%. Okay, so if you had had a limit order down here, you would have missed this move. Whereas if you had entered up here, you would have caught it. So even though the 50% entry is more favorable, you may miss some moves if you use it. All right, now in either case, regardless of how you entered, your stop loss is going to go down here below this candle. So if the market had come down here and taken out the low, it would negate this signal here. And as for targets in this case, I've gone ahead and plotted some levels and let me show you why I put them there. So if I move out to the weekly time frame, and I'm gonna scroll back here. So all I'm looking at in this case is this price action right back here because remember, this was our signal candle. So none of this at the time would have occurred, okay? So I'm not using any of this right now. And if you'll notice back here, we had some lows here, we had these highs, and we also had lows throughout here. These highs through here, we had a little low in here. And again, swing lows and swing highs. So these two levels right here, I would have plotted based on this price action back here. And if we then zoom in, go back to the daily time frame. All right, let me just get my bearings here. And this is how it would have looked. So here is our signal candle right here. And this up here could have been your first exit. Now, of course, we also had these highs right here. So technically it could have been here or this level here, which we identified on the weekly time frame. And if you had trailed your stop loss on the way up and, and uh, you know, because of the momentum here, we had this low highs retest of this level. If you had trailed your stop loss on the way up, you could have targeted this other weekly level that we identified. And you can see how the market started to uh, find resistance here and then it broke through and found support. Same thing with this level here. Once it broke through, it found support in this area. All right. So, those are some, uh, some ways to get out of the market. We could have used this range high or this weekly level. And again, if you had trailed your stop loss and ridden this for a few weeks, you could have actually gotten out up here at this other weekly level. Now that we've discussed the four steps involved in swing trading, let's go ahead and put it all together. So to recap, we're going to use the daily and weekly timeframes to identify key levels. However, most of your trading will be done on the daily timeframe. So the first step is to identify those support and resistance levels that can be horizontal levels as well as trend lines. Step two is to evaluate the momentum in the market. Remember those three different types of trends. We have the short term, intermediate and long term. Step three is scan for buyer sell signals. That's the pin bar, the long tailed candle, and also the engulfing pattern. Step four is to determine entry and exit points. For entries, that can be a break of the trigger candle or a 50% entry. And of course, the exit points are gonna be the stop loss or your target, which are those levels you drew in step one. So at this point, let's go ahead and walk through each step on the Euro USD daily timeframe. All right, so first step is to identify our key levels. And in this case, if you remember from step one, one of those levels was this area through here. Now it does become sort of messy back here, but I'm mainly focusing on this high here and this low. All right, now the other one I wanna look at is this swing low down here, because remember we're looking at, we're focusing on the swing highs and lows and this is certainly one of them. 
And of course I have this level up here at these highs. And we've also got this swing low down here. So just to draw this out for you, swing low, we've got this high, this low, these two lows back here, and then this multi-year high up in this region. The second step is to identify the momentum. So remember those three different types of trends. If I move out to the weekly chart, um, in fact, I'm gonna go all the way out to the monthly here, you'll notice that we have this long-term downtrend. All right, so this is the long-term downtrend. We've got lower lows and lower highs over the course of, this is actually 12 years, okay? So this is definitely a long-term downtrend. And if I move down to, back to the daily chart, this right here was actually an intermediate uptrend. All right, so we've got this low right back here, some highs, lower lows, followed by higher highs. Now this one right here lasted for just over a year, so this does qualify as an intermediate uptrend. Now, there was a trend line break, and I discussed this in step one, earlier in the training. So there was a trend line break that occurred up here. And this can be an early warning sign of a shift in the trend. All right, so the intermediate uptrend came to an end, or at least started to come to an end with this close right in here. Okay, so it acted as support back here back in here and again here, close below it and then notice what happened. The market sold off and started a short-term downtrend. So to recap, we have a long-term downtrend, intermediate uptrend, and a short-term downtrend. Now, you may also remember, I mentioned that the majority of your trading will be done on the short-term trends. So in this case, that's referring to this short-term downtrend right here. And if you'll notice, at one of our key levels, we had a bearish pin bar form. So the market respected this level as support. It then closed below it right here. It came back up and retested this level as new resistance and it formed a bearish pin bar. Now, you may recall in the very first part of this training, I mentioned that I used the 10 and 20 exponential moving averages. And to quickly tell you how I use those, um, and I go into this in more detail in other lessons, but the 10 and 20 I use as a mean reversion tool. So it's the average price of this downtrend. So what I like to look for for sell signals is the market to come back up into this area all right, so this tells me that the market is not stretched. So when it's down here, look how far it is away from the mean. I do not want to sell down here. Once it comes back up into this area, then I can become I can start looking for sell signals. Okay, so the bearish pin bar is our signal. And the next step is to look for entries. Okay, so remember, the 50% entry will give you a better risk to reward ratio, but its big downside is that you won't always get triggered. The second option is to enter on a break below this candlestick, which would have worked out nicely as the market sold off and the stop loss would go above the candle. Now the target in this case is going to be this next support level, which remember was this low back here. All right, so this one right here. And so that's gonna be our target and you'll notice that it bounced right from that area. And again, back here too. So this was our signal candle. Entry, stop loss goes above the candle and our target is 
down in this area. And that right there, uh, just looking at it would have been about a three R trade. So it is a decent risk to reward ratio. So there you have it. Step one, identify key levels. Step two, evaluate momentum. Step three is to scan for signals. And step four is to identify those entries and exits. So just always remember to stick to the daily timeframes, look for one to two quality setups each week and keep it simple. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave your comment below and be sure to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.